What's up guys and welcome to the season finale of the F1 2017 Road to Ferrari. Today is the day that we find out whether Antonio Giovinazzi has earned a seat at Ferrari. So before we get into that, of course, it is time for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, the season finale, and we are here for qualifying to see how Giovinazzi gets on. Do make sure to leave a like if you have enjoyed this series. It really, really would mean a lot. But uh, yeah, anyway, we're going to get into qualifying. And as you can see, we are on the first lap of qualifying now. Just a tenth behind Verstappen in at the first sector. And now going through sector two, losing a little bit more time. But of course, it is Kimi Raikkonen who has gone quickest. So that is to be expected. But it was a pretty decent lap, to be fair. No real big mistake from Giovinazzi. He comes across the line one and a half seconds back but out qualifies his teammate and is just behind Lewis Hamilton. So he is currently ahead of Max Verstappen but now skipping to just 10 seconds before the end of the session. He is currently lying in P6 just behind Sergio Perez but ahead of both of the Red Bull drivers, but uh, now coming towards the final sector, he isn't up on his previous best time, and he has slipped down to P8 now, so one and a half tenths down on his previous best, and now coming around the final corner, it's not going to be an improvement, but still a very good qualifying session for Giovinazzi. Is anybody else improved? No, it's P8, so very, very good. One of his best qualifyings of the season, and now we're going to take a look at the full grid for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, so it's an all-Ferrari front row with their veteran out qualifying the world champion Raikkonen who of course wrapped the title up last time out with uh, an all Mercedes second row and uh, Ricardo and Perez on the third row with Giovinazzi there sitting in P8 with his teammate directly behind him in 10th. Ocon will be disappointed with 12th position and uh, Pascal Wehrlein up in 15th as a result of the penalty. So Nico Hulkenberg starting right at the back of the grid which isn't good for him. But now it is time to get into the race. And before we get into the race, if you guys are still watching, do make sure to comment down below what your favourite part of this season was. Of course, uh, coming towards the end now, it's uh, it's good to reminisce. Good to reminisce to see what your favourite part was. But now getting on to the, uh, to the formation lap. And as you can see, it was a tie in terms of, uh, of the qualifying. So 10 all between Giovinazzi and Grosjean. So uh, yeah, Giovinazzi has just got to try and outrace... Uh, Grosjean this afternoon and uh, he will have outscored him in the uh, in the drivers championship so yeah been a very good season very good rookie season for Giovinazzi whether it's enough to get a Ferrari seat is questionable because of course Ferrari have been so good this season but uh, yeah sooner than rather than later we will find out what is the case and now it is time to go to the five red lights for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix the season finale here and away we go is it a good start it's a reasonable start from Giovinazzi everybody got away pretty equal Apart from Daniel Ricciardo who got a poor start, Verstappen got stuck behind his teammate and Giovinazzi takes advantage of that and goes up into P7 through Turn 1. So pretty decent start from, uh, from Giovinazzi so far. And uh, now going towards the end of the first sector, Perez and Ricciardo are side by side. Will Giovinazzi be able to uh, capitalise on that happening? And uh, now Perez is there and he switches back to the inside. So Perez has to leave in the room now, going into the hairpin, which of course leads on to the long straight. But uh, Giovinazzi has to settle in behind them. Perez does have the superior engine. And uh, now it's going to be interesting to see who does have the uh, the better run down into the, uh, the first of two chicanes. And of course, when lap three comes, the DRS will be active on this and the next straight. So going now down into standard mix. Can he get a good run out of that chicane? You can't really take too much curb on the exit or else it will chuck you off. But uh, yeah, pretty clean through there. And sure enough, come lap three, the gap is pretty much the same between Giovinazzi and Perez. But the difference is, you can see up ahead is Valtteri Bottas. He has once again run into issues. Unlike the real life season, in this career mode, Mercedes just don't seem to be able to catch a break whatsoever in terms of reliability. So now it looks like Ricardo is going to try and go for a move on Bottas. And then Perez slows down and Giovinazzi goes into the back of him, but somehow just about manages to keep the car intact and now you can see going on to the next lap lap four once again uh, the DRS is active and now you can see Perez going very slowly to try and avoid Bottas Giovinazzi doesn't slow it he's chipped off half of his front wing so quite a considerable amount and that is surely going to hinder the uh, the downforce going into the uh, the last sector but Giovinazzi goes around the outside of the struggling Bottas and uh, now Perez breaks very early into there and oh my this is just awful 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 stuff for Giovinazzi 
Messi. The entirety of his left front wing has just completely chipped off. He's got no end plates left. And he's going to try and uh, sort of stick it out for the moment. But no, as they go through this left-hander, there is just nothing on the car to try and, uh, to you know, to, to just to generate any sort of downforce. So, yeah, sure enough, Giovinazzi decides it is probably a wise idea to come in a lap early. And, uh, yeah, switch on to the super soft tyres. Uh, fortunately, just like a lot of tracks this season, the tyre wear isn't critical. So he's going to come in from P6, but, of course, they're going to have to do a front wing change, which is not good whatsoever. And uh, he comes into the pit, line, pit lane, just about manages to slow it down. But you can see on the minimap just the train of cars behind Bossas. So I think that is really going to hinder Giovinazzi, and he's going to be right towards the back of the order once everyone's made their pit stop. So it could be a difficult end to the season for Antonio. You know, he was running so well up in P6, and now the green light is on, meaning he has released. It's a eight and a half, nearly nine second pit stop, which is not ideal. So he's lost a good five or six seconds in the process, but uh, it should give him enough downforce, uh, providing he doesn't chip off any more of his front wing before now and the end of the Grand Prix to uh, to get him to the end. So he emerges in P19. Marcus Ericsson is stone dead last at the moment, but uh, now going on to the start of lap six, there's someone else who's pitted. I believe that is Nico Hulkenberg. So of course Hulkenberg is a good gauge, really, because he started right at the back of the grid, and he has in fact jumped Giovinazzi. So that just shows how much of a train there was behind uh, Valtteri Bottas. Not good whatsoever for Antonio, and he is in P19 at the moment. Of course, there's a lot of other drivers left to pit, but uh, still, it is not an ideal end to the season, and Ferrari are going to be looking, of course, in this race to Giovinazzi if they haven't made up their decision already, and they're really not going to be impressed at the moment, but he does emerge in P11 after the, uh, the first lot of pit stops have occurred. Uh, I'm not sure. There may be some other cars coming into the pits at the end of lap 7, but at the moment it is P11, and yes, sure enough, there are a couple more cars uh, that are currently in the pit lane, so one of which is Stoffel van Dorn, and the other, we can't quite see who it is. It is Carlos Sainz, in fact. So this is going to be very tight between Giovinazzi and Sainz. Sainz is now emerging from the pit lane, just about to join, and he is, in fact, ahead of Giovinazzi. So he is up in P9, with Giovinazzi sitting on just one point at the moment. But uh, now, as we go towards the DRS zone, Giovinazzi goes very, very wide into there. It's very erratic at the moment. He's just trying to gain as much time as possible, and he just needs to calm it down, get his lines right, and uh, really focus on this DRS straight. So now he's going to open the DRS flap at the start of lap 8. Is he going to be able to gain on science? He's done it in the last couple of races, uh, notably in Mexico where he managed to get past the Spaniard, but now he goes down the inside. Is he going to be able to make the turn? I think he is, but uh, science is, of course, going to be on the inside, and uh, Giovinazzi just holds back because now he's going to get DRS. He also gets the better exit off the corner, so pretty wise move there from Antonio, and uh, he is now up into P9, the position which he's finished, in fact, the last two races. So if he stays in the same position now, it will be three races on the trot in at ninth position. And sure enough, going on to lap 14, you can see he couldn't make any inroads up ahead. Nico Hulkenberg, in fact, getting ahead of Felipe Massa into P7. So it's been a very good end to the season for Nico Hulkenberg and Renault. But now Giovinazzi is trying to fend off Valtteri Bottas in the final lap of the race, the final lap of the season. And they go towards the uh, the Yaz Bridge, or the, uh, sorry, the Yaz Hotel, underneath the, uh, the hotel now. And just a couple of corners remaining to keep Bottas behind. It's really not renowned as an overtaking opportunity. So two corners to go. Takes it in fourth gear. And now one corner remaining of this 2017 season. And he comes across the final corner. Antonio Giovinazzi to take P9 for the third race in a row. A couple of more points for Haas. But still not the end of the season that he would have wanted. But still... You've got to say, what a great season it's been. Sebastian Vettel takes victory in the final race of the season. Maybe even a little thank you from uh, Kimi Raikkonen to say, yeah, uh, yeah, thanks for your help during the championship. And uh, Ferrari will be very, very happy with that. A 1-2 to end the season. 1-2 and two in the championship, I believe, and taking home the Constructors Championship. Uh, Constructors standings trophy and uh, they can see Lewis Hamilton in P3 so it's going to be very difficult to justify taking Giovinazzi next season but there you can see the final race results so Ricardo a very good P4 with Perez 5th and Verstappen 6th so Perez actually does hold off Verstappen in the championship I, I believe with uh, Hulkenberg there in P7 ahead of Massa, Giovinazzi and Bottas scoring just one point so not a great end to the season for Valtteri Bottas 
You can see there one DNF and that was Daniel Kvyat uh, relatively late on in the Grand Prix, I believe. And uh, yeah, Roman Grosjean, a very disappointing P14 for him. So uh, no points once again for the, uh, the Giovinazzi's teammate. But uh, still, that is the end to the season. And now we can see the final uh, sort of uh, driver's standings with uh, Raikkonen ahead of Vettel and then Bottas and Hamilton making up third and fourth. Ricardo was ahead of Perez, but Verstappen couldn't overtake Perez towards the end of the season. And uh, Giovinazzi there in P8 can be pretty happy with that. 85 points to 69. Uh, for Grosjean and Haas very good P5 in the standings but quite a long way behind Force India and uh, yeah there's about a 50 point gap to Force India and also a 50 point gap back to Renault uh, sorry back to Williams and then Renault a long way back there despite Hulkenberg's good end to the season but there we can see a little message from the Haas guys they say we are delighted to announce that your performance has been above our expectations and you finished eighth in the drivers championship you and your teammate Roman Grosjean have also amassed enough points for us to finish fifth in the constructors' standings. We look forward to progressing even further next season. Now tight, take some time to relax. You've earned it. And uh, then we go on to the uh, sort of the season one overview. So we can see there Haas in terms of the uh, sort of the development. They were quite low down behind Williams and Renault despite finishing above them. And if you do want to take a pause and uh, look at what our race positions were, then you can see there. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see uh, uh, performing above expectations, which is uh, was pretty good. And uh, yeah, expecting at least a couple of contract offers, but now we go into season two and there was nothing at all. Literally just season two has begun and we're driving with Haas. So yeah, that concludes the road to Ferrari. A little bit of an anticlimax at the end, but nonetheless, guys, I hope you have enjoyed my first ever full season of career mode at a game release. If that doesn't deserve a like, I don't know what does. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And I'll catch you guys for another career mode later on this week or maybe even next week. We'll see. But until then, guys, do take care. Bye-bye.